We're going to do the eight warrior movement number one. Now in the eight warrior movement, you have to consider yourself an armored vehicle or a tank that's going to punch through the attack. As a combatant, you don't have the opportunity to play games with guessing on what somebody is going to do. So instead, you take the initiative and you do. The first movement balls up your body into a position that is difficult to penetrate. It also causes your back and legs to get into a position to spring forward just like a tiger. The second motion is the cutting down to clear what I like to call the chamber or the area you're going to strike. If your arm is broken through with a force of your weight going down in the stomp, you know you have a spot that's open. So that's what that is, okay? So, one, two, and you don't wait, it's one, two, three. And I'm gonna do it slow so you understand. Now you notice the whole body's into it as what we were trying to teach you in the first couple episodes. So in order to get through a defense, you have to have your whole body. So, correction on this motion is essential because the martial artist that has been playing many styles as he has tends to put more movement into it. Remember, Baji is very simple in motion, very complex in power delivery. So if you notice his hands did more, so do it again. Okay. You want to guard from trying to combine Baji techniques. He pounded down, up, and then down. What you want to do is you want to launch into the motion already guarding. If you notice the way my hand is, it's a lot like boxers do when they're guarding themselves. Well, the only problem is you can't do it on both sides or else you have no power generation. So the first side is closed. The chin is down so that you cannot get hit in the neck. The elbows down protecting your heart. So your first position is here. Then he crosses the center line with a force. Then he threads right to the middle. Very good. Okay. You notice how his back arm is straight? It's very important. If he puts it back here, like they do in some of the southern styles of Kung Fu, what happens is your power goes that way. But in Baji, we're trying to generate whole body power in motion. So it has to be in the same line. You don't want to divert. So do it again. Guard. Block. In. Okay, in the beginning phase, we try to make sure that there's horse stances. The reason is, is because if the horse stance isn't total, and the heel's not kicked out when you toe in, then the hip's not engaged, and the back. Okay, if the forward, if the foot is forward like this, the hip's behind. You can do that later on after you've learned how to do this right. Try it again, do a beginner style. Now his horse stance is much more square. 
His horse stance is wider, but he's taller. And I'm pretty tolerant about people fitting their own body as opposed to the perfect picture. Okay, again. Good. And you notice it slides a little bit. You've got to train on odd terrain. If you don't train on odd terrain, how are you going to fight? Now, you got to be careful not to arch your back too much and bring your face down. You don't want to get kicked in the face. So when you drop, you sink. So the spring compresses. Down. Block. The spring comes back. The moment this hand goes down, you have to go. Because you're exposed. But you have to be exposed in order to put the strike in. And then you go up straight. Across. Okay, that's number one. Application simple. It doesn't matter what he does. Although, in general, see you stand regular, whatever fighting stance you want. In general, the jabs or kicks, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever comes, I close. And then I pound down and I go in, okay? And the moment that you pound down, you go in. It's also here, one, he tries to cross, two, here, okay? That's the traditional way. But in reality, when you're training troops or somebody that's going to use this, a bodyguard, whatever they are, you just, anything coming at them, the stick, it doesn't matter. They close up and they go in. And that's all there is to it. Number one, simple. I'm very fond of number two because it's very good for people that like to grab or grapple um, you while you're trying to fight. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, Generally, what number two does is it gives you enough room to close, it changes your direction of attack, and it allows you to slam into the opponent. So, number two in Jingle Batsu, you're going to open the chamber by forcing it outside with your hand. Now, you notice I'm on a straight line. I stepped out to a 45, and I, my waist and my body hit at the same time with my arm. Then, I strike right down that center line that I just opened up. I come back. You notice how my body has changed. I'm poised like a tiger again. I opened up. I'm going to that 45 degree angle. So I step out, block, strike. Clear, strike. Clear, strike. lower on the clear. Your elbow's got to be dropped. All right. Okay, so you don't want to go ahead. Second side. Okay, good. Stay there. Okay, you don't want to be too far up because then you're open. And anybody that knows anything about combat knows that that's a very dangerous area. So, he wants to be here. He's coming into the side. Okay. Okay. Stepping back too far. Just 45. Halfway. That was all the way. Go back. Come good. Now the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a lot of people make the, mis the same mistake. And it doesn't matter how long they've been training. You step out. You change halfway. Don't go all the way. Then you go in. Sink a little bit when you stop. You're still coming all the way back. Try to shorten that. Better. It's harder, I know. Try to do it fluidly. Don't stop. That's it. Okay, not too. I'll do it anyway. Okay, besides the obvious, the obvious is if the fist is coming directly at you and you can get behind the elbow and twer torque their body, you can expose the rib cage for the strike. Okay, so that would be more of a distance application. 
But my favorite thing about number two is that it shows you how to get out of situations where you're very close. So if he tries to advance, I can come out and go on the side. So I'll do that again really slow. I step out into the side. Okay, I'm hitting with my shoulder because even slight strikes with the whole body between them hurt. So if you're practicing with a friend, you don't want to use your knuckles or elbows. You want to use your shoulder and your hip. And don't hit so hard because your whole body's behind it. So, again, even if we're locked up, I can still get motion in that direction. So we'll start again. Your first leg, which is the furthest away, is the back leg. You change and you get inside. In the spirit of uh, turning your body into a tank or armored vehicle, whatever you want to call it, in Western terms, number three resembles the tank probably most of all. So in number three traditional, you drop your arm back. You go straight up over both arms, you drop down. You look at your hands, you turn your head, hard part facing the opponent, drop your shoulder, and come up underneath into the groin or whatever. You drop back, you take your arms, drop, look down. Turn your head, hard part towards the opponent, and you come up underneath. Don't forget to drop your shoulder. Back, down, drop, shoulder, up, back, down, up, down, up. Try to keep your chin down. Don't worry about losing control if your power is out of control at the end. That's a sign of progress. Your body gradually gets used to your movement. And in order to make a jump, you need to take risks. But don't risk your knees. Make sure you're stepping solid and sinking. Okay, now application for number three. Pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> okay, so traditionally it has to do with a grab. If he's got my arm, you pull back, you drop down, and you come up, okay? But we're just going to use it for easy combat technique. So a fist comes in, you drop your whole body down on their body, and then you come up. Okay, I'm hitting the face. You could come up in behind in the groin. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do with that. Um, but the, the important thing is to take away all their their understanding of what's going on in the first encounter. As you drop, your whole body drops, I'm not going to do it because it hurts like hell, all the way down so that it jerks him straight down. His neck snaps back, causes him to see, see stars, and then it doesn't matter what you do. Okay? Now, the reason why we're dropping our hand and turning our head is because we're anticipating a very hard target. Baji fighters in tradition have run up against some really strong opponents, especially when it comes to government work. And they're not just going to stand there and let you do it, so they're going to be trying to pound. So my head is covered. If I come in, I drop down, he could be trying to hit my head and it doesn't matter. I'm still coming in. Okay? So you offer a target. I figure one, two, and three is enough for this episode. It's quite a lot to digest. Um, besides, I think it's more important that you learn how to generate the power from the previous videos. I think a couple things that happen here probably will help you with that. Um, happy training. <laughs>